Okay, in this section we're going to be talking about equations that, although they look like they're quadratic, they're quadratic in nature. They have certain quadratic tendencies about them, which means if we can rewrite them in a certain way, we can apply quadratic methods for solving them. So equations that are quadratic in nature take on this form. A u squared plus b u plus c is equal to zero. Now, what you're going to notice is that you're going to have a constant here at the end. You're going to have some variable expression represented by u. And you're going to see that same variable expression with double the power, with twice the exponent at the beginning. And if an equation can be written in that form, then we can solve it using quadratic methods. For example, let's solve the equation x to the fourth minus 5x squared minus 36 is equal to zero. Okay, Now, it looks like it might be kind of rough. A um, couple of things to note here. This is a uh, this is a polynomial equation, which means you can take this uh, power and this degree of the polynomial tells you how many solutions we can expect. So we can expect four answers here. Um, but I do want you to see how this is quadratic in nature. You've got your constant term, the c. You have a variable here. Don't worry about the phi, but it's the variable piece, x squared. And you'll see that this is repeated over here with twice the power. So we go from x squared you double that to get x to the fourth. So this is an example of something that's quadratic in nature. Now, if you look at the textbook or my math lab, they're really big on doing this u substitution, which we're going to use, but we don't need it for something like this. See, this is a fairly nice polynomial, and we just need a factor. Can you find or figure out how you would factor something like x to the fourth? Now think about this. Normally when you have x squared, you split it up as x to the first and x to the first. So, what do you think you would do if you had x to the fourth? Well, you split that up as x squared and x squared. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And then we treat the 36 just like we would always treat the 36. Try to find those factors of 36 that subtract to give you 5. Those factors, of course, being 9 and 4. Now, playing around with the signs, we know we need a negative 9 and a plus four here, all right? So we've factored. Now, there are a couple of things we can do here, but I want us to just go ahead and say, let's use the zero factor theorem at this point. So the zero factor theorem would say, you take x squared minus nine and you set that equal to zero, or we're gonna take x squared plus four and we set this equal to zero. So don't be overwhelmed by the entire equation all at the same time, just do this one piece at a time. So over here, to solve this, you would first move the nine to the other side to make that a positive nine. And the way that you undo the square is to use the square root property. Don't forget the plus or minus. And here we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. And with that plus or minus there, that gives us two of our four total solutions. Over here, we're going to do something very similar, solving this guy using the square root property. But first, get the square by itself by subtracting 4 on both sides. And now, use that square root property on both sides of the equation. Don't forget the plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2. And the negative inside is going to make this 2i. So in this equation, we end up with two solutions that are real and two solutions that are imaginary. But all four of these guys will constitute the solution set for this equation. Let's try another one very similar to this. So let's solve the equation 4x to the fourth 
plus 21 x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. Let's see what happens here. Well, we see that this is quadratic in nature because you have your constant term here at the end. You have x squared, and if you double this guy, you'd have x to the fourth, okay? If you double the power. So let's try to factor this. Now, I think we should use the AC method to get an idea about how things are going to break down. So if I do the AC method over here, a times c is 4 times 5, which gives us 20. We need to find factors of 20 that will add to give me 21. And so that ends up being 20 times 1, or 1 times 20. It doesn't really matter how you say that. All right, so I'm going to use those numbers to split up that middle term so it looks like this. 4x to the 4th, getting the right sign since everything here is positive. That's going to be plus 20x squared, x squared, plus 1x squared, plus 5 is equal to 0. And then it gets to the factoring by grouping part of the problem. The common factor here is 4x squared. And I factor that out, leaving me with x squared plus 5. And then in the second group, so this is a plus. Now notice that x squared and 5 don't really have anything in common, except for 1, right? Now you don't need to write the 1. I find it incredibly helpful to write that so that in our next part of factoring by grouping, we don't forget that the 1 is there. All right, so this gives me x squared plus 5 times 4x squared plus 1 equals 0. And it becomes a problem very much like we had in the last example. You use the zero factor theorem to set each factor equal to zero and solve. And you'll notice that each of these smaller equations is quadratic and perfect for using the square root property. So here, the first thing that you would do is to move the five to the other side, so that's negative five. And we use the square root property to undo this square. But again, since we are the ones that are putting in the square root, we have to remember the plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus, and what can we do here? Well, 5 can't come out of the radical, but this negative will factor out, will reduce out here as an i. So this is i times the square root of 5, plus or minus i squared root of 5. Over here, let's get the x squared by itself. So 4x squared is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 4. x squared equals negative 1 fourth. And now we apply that square root property on both sides. Again, don't forget the plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the negative inside makes that i on the outside. So we end up with four solutions, and all four of these guys happen to be imaginary. Now it's not that it always works out this way, it's not that you always have complex or imaginary solutions. Uh, in fact, if this had been a negative right here, then both of these signs would have been negative, which would have led you to positive numbers before you apply the square root property, in which case you would have had four real solutions. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, because in the next video, we're going to be looking at what does a u substitution look like, and when do I use that? Because here I didn't need that. My math lab and the book, you know, they're both trying to tell me to rewrite it in a special way when all you have to do is factor. But the next few examples, the use substitution is incredibly useful.